Yeah. Hello everyone, welcome back to another Youth Observations, or as we like to call it, you. And we are here today again at the AC Hotel, and today we'll be discussing cyberbullying, the effects of cyberbullying, and how you can help someone who has been cyberbullied. And we're just going to get straight into it. But first, introduce yourselves. So, my name is Javante Webster, final year student at the University of West Indies. My name is Daniel Mullings, and I'm studying software engineering. Hi everyone, I'm Ashley Onfroy, second year history and archaeology student. And I'm Saeed Byrne, I'm a normal Monday law student. Cyberbullying basically is, um, well, it, it actually encompasses so many different things, but normally when we speak to younger kids, it's a, you know, it starts off with, for starters, posting anything that without someone's permission. For example, the minute you post a photo that maybe your, your friends don't like, and they have made that clear that they don't like it, and you say, you know, take it down, yeah. that is an example of cyber. It may not be as serious, but it is cyber. Good question. If the photo is taken with your phone, though, doesn't that photo belong to you? I mean, it's tricky because once you are representing somebody else, so meaning once their face and their likeness is mm -hmm. represented in a photo, technically speaking, like even when I do documentaries, you need to get a talent release form before yeah. any of that can be put out. So technically, once your face is in it, you have a right to say, I don't want that to be shown. All right. So, uh, mm, go ahead. I mean, cyberbullying, they always say don't define things like that, but it's bullying in cyberspace. Don't use that word. Don't use that word. Right, right. But for, for layman, it's, it's basically bullying the layman. act of, you know, disrespecting someone, making somebody uncomfortable, making them, you know, feel less than on an internet platform or, um, yeah, on an yeah. internet platform. So, it's just it's the act of being disrespectful to them, making them uncomfortable. Yeah. And a lot like of that. persons don't know that it go. It's it's that it could be that simple. Mm -hmm. Other persons think is all right. I'm posting um pictures of somebody that yeah. you know private fake pictures or yeah, yeah, yeah. making yeah. a fake account or stuff Jogging. like that. People don't know it's as simple as not deleting a photo that somebody asks you to delete or that makes somebody feel uncomfortable. Exactly. Yeah, and according to a report, a uh, research that you report did. 39% of Jamaican youth have been victims yeah. of yeah. cyberbullying. Yeah. And they, that was in 2018, I think, or 2019, so I'm sure it, that's it very probably has grown. Yeah. Yeah. I think if yeah. you're on Twitter, you might, there's a high chance you might have experienced some form of cyberbullying. Yeah. 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 Even just cancel culture and all of them. Yeah, yeah. 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 Which, which cancel culture is a disease. It doesn't make any sense. Cancel culture is a disease. It's a disease. Yeah, it's, personally, I feel like it's a waste of Personal. time because you can always say that you're not going to support this person. I, you're one person, I just want to make that clear, you're one person, even if it's a thousand people, the people are still moving on with their lives, so what exactly are you, what exactly are you canceling? But yeah, cyberbullying, it's something very basic, I feel like we need to move past just thinking it's this whole scheme of things. Once they say something disrespectful to somebody and then they let you know, or that they feel away, like exactly, yeah. they feel like, that's it, that's, that's yeah. bullying. You know, I yeah. saw a video was posted recently. Um, and I remember, you know, all my friend groups and so on were talking about it and saying, boy, you know, how could she say this, whoever the person was in the video. And when the full video, like that gave the full context of what the person was saying was actually released, everybody was like, wait, the whole always sit down here, so I cuss about what the person was saying. The, the, the video, the post itself had a whole heap of likes and retweets and yeah. so on. And you, you almost felt cheated in a moment. You're like, but wait. What I was presented with wasn't true. So there's also that idea of you have to be careful of how you comment and how you respond to things online because not everything that's being represented is true in the first place and you can become a part of bullying without even intending Realizing. to. Yeah, that's true. Definitely. Has anyone here been a victim of Sarah bullying? No, um, I, I haven't. I guess because I've been very protective about my space and you know how you curate your cyberspace is also another thing and the, the type of information that they allow people to have on you, you know, so I haven't, but I know a lot of people who have, you know. Um, I've, I've been on Twitter for a while, um, I've never experienced a drag before. Mainly, oh, that's the young people uh, term for you, drag. Mainly, um, <laughs> well, personal is this, I, as, as a media a media student, I mean, I understand it, oh, the media space works, so I censor my tweets, I censor all of the, the, the information that I put out. So I practice self-censorship, so you know you have freedom of speech but at the same time you have to practice self-censorship because for instance there are certain topics, there are certain um, things that you can speak on that will get you into trouble and I think as of us we don't really understand how um, important and how powerful the, the, the social media space is, especially if I'm from like Twitter, like you can lose your job, 
you get me saying? Yeah. You basically, you can lose a lot of things based on certain um, things they put out. Yeah, I actually did experience cyberbullying when I was back in high school, and and <laughs> the, the oh god, the, inter- <laughs> the interesting thing about cyberbullying too is that, um, and this is gonna sound a little bit weird, but not because you don't know, but it doesn't mean that it's not happening, right? right? Because when I found out what was happening, it was probably like three days into it and it's here i hear somebody says i'm just like what what are you talking about and then i saw it so yeah i've experienced it and it's it spans far than just more than just you know putting on a twitter page or an instagram page it mm-hmm. can actually start with word of mouth and then you just transcend it into a, onto an online space so yeah so um i am exp- i don't think i've experienced cyberbullying per se i mean of course you know you may make a tweet or so on and it get a holy for uh, quote tweets with people responding certain ways and so on and making funny jokes and you might feel how it is um, and is that cyberbullying because you feel bad? I mean I mean alright you will really have to ask yourself the same thing in face to face right when somebody like makes a joke or so on and you feel bad is that I mean I think it's bullying if it persists like if it happens and if first, the person that's doing it knows that you have an issue with it mm-hmm. but they continue doing it then, then I think that's when it starts I think that's when it as in bullying. but if 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 because the way Jamaicans say I will if a joke I go on all the time right mm-hmm. so somebody might make a joke and go on and maybe at f- I don't think at first initially unless they had that intent but I don't think at first initially if somebody makes a joke that you would necessarily be bullying but if you express that you have a problem and 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 then I would say that that's bullying. So. What, what's sad about it is that I don't know, but there are some of us who say that oh, some bullying is bad, don't do it. But yes, there are the same persons who mm. laugh at a victim. The person that does not make us that makes the person who is the cyber bully. Yeah, right? Yeah. So, right, and, and, and that is why that's a huge part as to why cyber bullying ha- happens. You know, it's not about getting back at somebody most of the times. Somebody just does sharing. it for fun. Like also you do something it. and yo, I need to share this. Yeah. <laughs> and all of a sudden, I'm getting a thousand retweets yeah, yeah. and like, yeah. yeah and there's a thousand more people that saw it that didn't need to say it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So sometimes they do for their own gratification and their own social media following as opposed to the like person. person. But at and the end of the day, we are, we are enablers in some sense. I think part of the Absolutely. thing too is that in Jamaica, we have a very... We have several cultures here, but um, we have a very ramp of culture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so... Everything is a joke. Yeah, man. Everything is a joke. It's just a joke. It's, yeah. So I think part of that is, I guess you could call that a, a bit of an enabling culture too, Facility. where we don't really understand the parameters of cyberbullying. But as we've all been saying, once there's defamation of character, once they're uncomfortable, once they feel disrespected, and it is made known, and it is made known, and you perpetuate that, yeah. Even if not directly, you're you're culprating yeah. the cyberbullying. And I, I, I think. I mean, we have the Cyber Bullying Act. Well, Cyber. Cyber Crime. Cyber Crime. Right? right? And it has some level of dealing with Cyber Bullying in it. But I also think a conversation needs to be had with people as it relates to what are your rights if you're mm-hmm. Cyber Bullying. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of people, if you say, hey, that's libel, you know, what is libel? What is defamation? So at the end of the day, if people know how to keep others accountable with their information, mm-hmm. then others are less likely to do it because. I am less likely to probably publish something about you, Javante, because I know such shucks. You can sue me, you know. So, let me. Yeah, so, a lot of people don't know the consequences of the A lot of people don't know the, 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 the consequences, and a lot of people don't know the rights that they have when it comes to social um, media and what they can do if something like this happens to them. And what happens is, as a result of that lack of accountability on, from either party, the victim now becomes a, a social case in that, you know depression, anxiety, lack of effort on Gwanda or rock. And it, it, it really adds to the multiplicity of problems that we already have. Yeah. So, you know, I think people should try to seek out their rights when it comes to social media. What can and cannot a person do to you? And if it is done, what, what can I remedy? Do? Mm-hmm. Right. What can you do to hold that person about it? Which, was, which now brings me to the effects of cyberbullying cyber and mm-hmm. Said has mentioned a couple of depression, which may lead to suicide. Um, do you guys know of any major cases or any cases where cyberbullying has led? Um, so there's one case that I remember hearing a superintendent present about at uh, one of them safer internet days summits. Um, and it's not exactly cyberbullying, but it's a cyber crime. So essentially, it's catfishing, right? And I always tell a story, especially when I speak to young kids. I'm like, yo, so Jerry, Jerry is a guy, right? Jerry is a popular guy, yeah. 
um, Jerry gets a message from um, Kerry, and Kerry is saying, you know, she love him off, him cute, yeah man, yeah man, we have to go meet up and thing. And when he goes to meet up with her, he's not Kerry at all. Mm-hmm. It's Kerry. <laughs> it's Kerry, right? So it's actually a man that comes. And this was a serious case because um, they actually abducted the young man. So they abduct Jerry, right? So Perry abduct. Uh, I remember, right, Jerry. Too many rhyming words. <laughs> <Right. Perry laughs> yeah, Perry abducted Jerry, right? Yeah. Um, and they did all sorts of stuff to the young man, and you know, it was just like, it was it, persons were kind of shocked because it was like catfishing happens here in Jamaica. That's kind of the response. Yeah. Oh no, it happens. Of course. So, that's, so I think we need to socialize catfishing and educate. Is a cyber, is a cyber crime. It, I believe is it, it is a. What? I don't know if it's I a cyber crime. Catfishing. Per se. I think it would be, but it just would not it comes be under classified something. as that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because, I mean, catfishing is essentially um, misrepresenting, misrepresenting right. so personal assuming identity. someone else's identity. Right. So that's yeah. actually or an identity. Not necessarily so someone's exactly. identity, because you could create a persona. That's true. I know it comes right. under something. Right. It, it, it is a crime, it, it is but a I don't crime. know what the, what the crime it's charge was. It's a crime under was. something. Yeah. yeah. It's a but crime under something. Even for abducting the young boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, that would be definitely so. a crime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, 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 I think young kids just need to know that, boy, you know, it's, it's not just a space for like Roblox and Discord and I'm going to have fun. Like you need to also be educated yeah. on how you operate in the space and what kind of information you're putting out online. So what are some other effects of cyberbullying? Well, you know, generally when persons, uh, you know, their self-esteem is depleted because their character has been, you know, tarnished, there is decreased productivity, they're going to feel, they're going to go into a period of depression, they probably want to interact with the outside world as much, so they might, you know, as they say, go off the radar or disappear or anything exactly on the rock. And it's times like that when you have to be really concerned because when somebody is demotivated, their mind can travel to some places that it probably shouldn't. So depression sets in. Um, anxiety can set in and suicidal, even, thoughts. suicidal thoughts I mean it can even have further implications as to their job or even um, academic pursuits um, perspectives or prospectus rather because you know that sort of tarnished your reputation it doesn't the thing is what happens on the internet never goes away so and you know that when you're going to apply for universities especially at the, the master's level and, and beyond or certain jobs there's always a background check so whilst it might not have been something that you did for yourself once they you know, type it in and they find that it's going to be an issue. So we need to be careful about what we say about people, what we put on the internet, how we utilize the space. I mean, it's a free space, but with freedom comes great responsibility. Which touches on, um, you said something about losing jobs or not getting jobs. Mm-hmm. I can't remember there was a female who did a video. She was just doing a video about her sexual experience and the thing is that a lot of people knows where she works oh. where she works and she lost her job because her work her employers saw the video and she was tarnishing other people's names it was a whole thing. Whole thing. Yes. i know that with oh you can go i know that with things like that though persons tend to say oh my personal life is my personal life which which i agree with your mm-hmm. personal life is your personal life but you also have to understand that you as a person a brand. you represent a brand, a brand. A brand. so you need to be careful about the things that you do. If it seems that it may be potentially harmful, you probably don't want to put that out into the public space. When you're with your friends, you have a one or two discussions, mm-hmm. but on a public platform, especially if you are a, a personality or a spokesperson for a company, you definitely want to be careful about what you say, the image that you portray. So personal life, personal life is personal life, but you have to be, you have to be careful. I mean, you don't even have to be a, a, a spokesperson. Or a... You just have to work for a job and people know where you work. Not even working for a job, you could own your own business. Like, yeah. if you put out certain things, you know, it can affect your business as well. Um, and I should kind of prepare for what I was about to say. There's a fine line between free speech, freedom of expression, and, you know, ensuring that you don't put anything on social media that will work against their harm. And I've seen it a lot of times where, you know, Especially young people would tend to say, well, well, I get to say what I want to say and oh, but they say these things on, on Twitter, they're, they're not affected. And I would say that certain pages are known for certain things. Um, mm-hmm. Certain context. Yeah, certain, right, in, in a particular context. So if, um, and I know people have the Twitter, and, you know, they post about what they want to do, you know, in their private life mm-hmm. and all of that. And it may not affect them because, again, context, you know. Um, 
but in, in certain spaces especially when it comes to the type of field you want to go into so for example i want to go into law i know that's a conservative field so i am sure that whatever is out there it doesn't come back to bite me so at the end of the day it's all about weighing your options as a person what you want and you know what you don't need to be out there at this point in time because of your goals so i think we need to sit down as young people and think through these things and not just see social media as a hype to where we just go on because we're past that now. Mm-hmm. Right, government, um, not government, um, um, companies are using social media as even higher platforms. True. Yeah, you know what you can actually do because I have friends that do that is they, well I don't say they establish a double persona, but they create spaces for whatever content that they yeah, want yeah. to push. So I, I know persons Finstant. have... Right, I've never grasped the concept of a Finsta, but I guess one day I know some people that have their legitimate professional Instagram account and then they have their, I should say, photography journal account or their creative pieces account. So it's okay for you to do that. And then you can accept who you want. Right, and you're establishing your context. So for example, if you're creating a page that is about, I don't know, um, art, outlandish art, you know, whatever is said there or it's posted there is within that context and that's separate from, for example, Ashley on for a PhD or whatever. Nice. And on another page. All right. so, yeah. For that, alright, so it's, it's two, two tenets to it. Um, so, you also have bullying whereby you know, people are going to attack you based on what you say. But also, sometimes you do have a responsibility to kind of, um, you know, as I said, sense of certain things where you put out. However, no, bear in mind that, for instance, um, you can literally just be doing nothing at all. Because no? people, like, for instance, they post a photo and people just make fun of them, make it, man, just rush them. People just like make some something that's not even controversial. Just some, for instance, uh, a tweet that, for instance, Shamar would say the same thing, but I said it, but because Shamar is, is, is a popular, then Shamar that's gets so, laughs, I, but because I said it, they, they rush me. They <laughs> get me, they rush me, and thing. And I run a time, I run a time to girl, she posted a video one time, and it's like, um, her. Her curtains weren't up to standard, I guess, and they were rushed. I just her picture, she and the photo are really nice. And, but there was focus on the photo, and that's how she had she needs to get new curtain, she needs to get new that, she needs to get that. It's a mess. So, they think, you know, um, I personally don't believe in making fun of people, it's a mess. That's just me personally. And there's a fine line between being, cyber, being cy- cyberbullying and also jogging. It's a fine, fine line, you know? F- extremely fine. Because sometimes some people really need a, a reality check, because they really t- type a lot of foolishness, and they need somebody to talk to them. But sometimes, you know, you can't leave people alone and get messed and make them enjoy them space and make them, you know? Because we're probably tough to talk to ourselves as a body always say, you know, talk to yourself, but just do what you do. And you know, be careful with yourself. Simple. That's very respectful, man. I like some of the points Ashley made earlier um, regarding some of the positives that also come with the space. So, yes, yeah, cyberbullying is a thing um, and all of those negatives that can happen, but definitely being able to build a brand and you know, even as a leader, sometimes, like for example, I get many internship opportunities for the faculty because people see me online and know that I'm a science and technology oriented person. So, you know, there are many ways that you can also use it space positively mm-hmm. to, to continue and empower and enhance whatever it is that you already have as a goal and objective. All right, so I want each of you to tell me something that you'd say to somebody who has been cyberbullied. Like, Recommendations for that person. Uh, okay, so if well, in the process, if, if you're getting bullied, in the process, I mean, um, if you find somebody accused of something, I don't know, you know, there are certain steps you can take, but what I I would recommend at least is don't necessarily try to defend it in a sense. Sometimes it's just lock up your phone for like a day or two, you get me on just go sleep and whatever. Um, but as it relates to the, the psychological impact, no, you have to understand. All right, the thing is. Social media is a powerful space. It's actually, I can argue that social media is probably, internet probably is the most powerful social institution at the moment. I get me, I say. So, at the same time, there are a lot of tenants to it that affect us on a daily. So, at the same time, we just have to understand that era going on. What's going on here, it affects real life, you know, but at the same time, it's not real life. So, you have things to do that you must get out of the way. So, don't spend all the time on social media trying to be somebody or not or whatever, or doing things that can get you into trouble. Just go on, do what you're doing, just go through, and don't hurt yourself. Um, I think I'd probably tell them what I wanted to hear at the time is that um, things are they take a time. It's pretty much temporary. There's yeah. nothing that's going to last forever. So you're going to feel offended now. You're going to feel like you want to run away now. You're going to feel away now. But 
um, there's a high possibility that depending on how you approach the situation yeah. in a few months to a year or many years you will be okay because honestly if we didn't have this conversation today I would not have remembered that experience because, <laughs> but in the time I felt like I was dying so you also have to look at knowing your worth too also the times in instances of cyberbullying it's not necessarily the truth so if you know who you are as an individual, what you stand for, then you know you're obviously going to have a, a decent enough support system around you. Just look at it as their words. So yes, they're harmful, but they do not necessarily dictate your future. So it's about how do you move on from this? How do you use this? Because you can use this negative instance and turn it into positivity. As a person's always say, there's no publicity that's bad publicity. So yes, your name might be out there and maybe being dragged through the mud for something. But you see, you know, you have that spotlight if you're in a space to do so. You can just highlight one good that you did and, and, and make right. it work for you. Yeah. So adding on to that, um, I think just remaining authentic is always important. So like even what Javante said earlier, you know, the girl posts up a nice picture and everybody are comment on her curtains. Like if them want to comment on that, leave them be and move on with your life scene. Social media is, you know, important to an extent um, and it does affect your life. I'm just not pretending like it doesn't. Um, but also remembering that you have a real world life that you can still be amazing at, that you can still be yourself and who you are in. Um, I think you should go through that. So remain authentic, no matter what nobody else says about your curtain, your closet, your anything. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And um, what I would say is the confident. Yeah. It, it's a space that is a simulation of the real world. Mm -hmm. right? It's a reflection of what happens. So you need to, you know, add in tacking on to the authenticity and, you know, being knowing who you are, you need to be confident as a person so that, you know, whatever is said doesn't really get to you that way. Two, I think you need to know what you can manage psychologically, um, you know, what's your threshold that you can deal with and know how to manage what you do and the effect that comes in because you know what you can manage. And finally, know your rights, you know, know how to keep others accountable. So if somebody, you know, has defamed your character, you know, slandered your name in the public, you know how is it that you can attain a remedy to keep them in check and to keep them accountable and to also repair the harm that's done to you. So those are my three um, sets. Alright, so in closing we can say that cyberbullying is a real thing. It is as simple as not removing a picture that somebody doesn't like and it can go as far as bullying somebody because of something they did or that may push people to go into depression, decrease their um, productivity. Decrease their productivity, sometimes even suicide. Mm. So we're we're all here challenging you to ensure that you're not a part of cyberbullying and if you have been cyberbullied before or you are being cyberbullied bullied, be confident. Be authentic. Be authentic. Know your worth. Know your rights. Know your rights. Just, just lock up your phone, fellow co <laughs> <laughs> Or turn off your phone. <laughs> Until next time, guys, don't forget to follow the Jamaica Observer on all our social media platforms at Jamaica Observer yes. and subscribe to Jamaica Observer's e paper. <laughs>